we're going to talk about the object model here. And because it's really quite similar for Excel 2010 and 2011, I'm going to do them together. To start with, it helps to understand where the idea for an object model came from. And this has to do with programming paradigms. So just like with problem solving, there are paradigms for how to think about programming. Now, of course, when people first started programming, there weren't any paradigms to speak of, and people just came up with whatever approach worked for them. But after a few years and some experience, people started to see that it really helped to have an organized approach to how you uh, start working on a problem in order to turn it into a program. Now, the first really popular uh, method that was developed was called top-down structured programming. And the way this works, you start with your problem, whatever it is, which is a task that you want your program to do, and you break that down into subtasks. So just like if you have a big task to do in real life, and uh, you want to get a grasp on it, you can break it down into subtasks so uh, they're more manageable. And then you take each subtask and you break it down into subtasks and so on until you get down to something that's a convenient size to program. So then you program those, uh, you can test them, and you build them back up, put them together until you have the entire program working. So that approach actually worked pretty well, but it has a major flaw. And that is that when you start with a top-down approach like that, then the subtasks you get tend to be extremely specialized for the overall task that you're trying to accomplish. And so it's not very easy to reuse them in another program, even if that program has to do many of the same kinds of things. So as bodies of code developed and companies started producing more and more code, they wanted to be able to reuse and not have to reinvent things every time. And that led to a different approach which is called object-oriented programming. Now, this is more of a bottom-up than a top-down method. And what you do is you think about, well, what kinds of objects does my program need to use? And in our case, those objects would be things like, oh, user forms, um, option buttons, list boxes, worksheets, those kind of things, the kinds of objects that you find in Excel. And then you think about, okay, well, for each object, what kind of things do I want my program to be able to work with on it? And in particular, what kind of properties does it have that we should be able to manipulate? Uh, what kind of tasks can it do, or can we make it do, in the course of the program? In other words, what, what jobs belong to this particular object? And what events does it respond to? Okay, because many programs use the same kinds of objects, if you can develop a really nice, robust object with a good set of properties, a good set of ways to do things, um, a reasonable set of events to respond to, then everybody who needs that kind of object can use the code you wrote. So this leads to much more reusable code or, or even if they can't reuse exactly what you wrote, they can modify it slightly and, and use it. Now, in some languages, the whole idea is you start and you build your whole library of objects yourself, or there may be a library provided, and you modify that and add on to it. Basically, in VBA, we're starting with a huge universe of objects, and we basically just use the ones that are provi provided to us. Okay, now a little terminology here. Uh, when we talk about objects, there's a thing called a class of objects, which is really the definition of a certain kind of object. It's like a framework. So to give a real life example, if I say the word chair, then chair is a class of objects. And an actual chair is going to be an instance of that class. It's an example. and so while you have an abstract notion of chair, you also have jillions of actual chairs that are instances of the idea of a chair. Well, classes are like that too. 
I have a class of worksheets, and then I have jillions of worksheets in all the Excel workbooks of the world that are instances of that particular class. Okay, now the objects in an application form a hierarchy. And we start with the application itself. Now there's a version of VBA for most Microsoft Office products and actually for other kinds of things as well. So in VBA, the application is the topmost object. And, and for Excel, VBA, the application is Excel. The, this Excel object directly contains other objects, like let's say workbooks is probably the most prominent one. And then workbooks contain objects themselves, like worksheets, charts, uh, VBA projects, and so on. Now, often, instead of just one object, you can have a whole collection of objects of a certain type within a given object. So, for example, a workbook can contain not just one worksheet, but a whole bunch of worksheets. Of course, they have to have different names so you can identify them. Um, and worksheets themselves contain many, many ranges. So each cell, for example, is a range, and then you can have collections of cells, too. Uh, a lot of times we'd be able to use a plural noun for um, a class, and you'll see that as, as we get into the notation, uh, where there can be more than one. So like we're already used to seeing cells instead of cell to describe a cell. Now I wanted to give some kind of analogy to give you a feeling for this hierarchy. So think of the application as being like a house. And the most prominent thing a house has is rooms. So that's like the workbooks, but then there's other things too, like say a roof or um, a front porch or etc. Each room has furniture, such as chairs. So just like each workbook can have worksheets. Now chairs themselves can be broken down into parts. They have legs, a seat, maybe some wheels or whatever. Not every chair has wheels, but every chair has a seat at least. A chair, you know, we can think of a chair as a class of things and there are some optional parts and some required parts. And then not every room has to have chairs, not just like not every workbook actually has to have worksheets, but most of them do. And some rooms have more than one chair, like the dining room has tons of chairs. Now this is not a perfect analogy, so don't try to push it too far, but you can kind of see the hierarchy going on, house, room, chair, chair seat, etc. just like we have Excel, workbook, uh, worksheet, range, and so on. Okay, now, objects have members of different kinds. First of all, there's properties. Uh, that would be something like the size, the color, the font, etc. Properties can be changed. Um, sometimes in the properties window, they can be read-only. Sometimes the program can change it. Methods are actions that can be performed by an object, or you can think of it as an action you can perform on the object or make the object perform, but it belongs to that object, and it's called a method of the object. Then there's a class of events there that an object is prepared to respond to, and that's another type of member. And finally, there's sub-objects that they contain, and Visual Basic views those as a kind of property. Now, actually, an object can have lots of members. Sometimes it's just mind-boggling. And so nobody tries to remember all the members and what they're called and how they work and so on. Instead, you have to have an easy place to look them up. And that's what the object browser is. So I decided to illustrate this with a class we're familiar with, which is ListBox. So here you can see um, I'm in the object browser. And I got to that by using the View menu to show the object browser. And you can do that in both uh, Mac and Windows versions. Um, in the Windows version, you can also use the F2 key. 
usually when I'm looking for something, I use the all libraries, although you can specialize it down, and you can take a look at that and see which ones are there. And I look for forms, and under forms, I found this box. And with this box selected, here are all the members of this box. And you can see different kinds of icons. So this one is for a um, method. This one is for a property. This one's for an event. If you look up here, this little icon is for the properties menu. So Excel, VBA is consistent in using this same icon for properties here and here. Okay. So here I am looking at this box. Again, here's a list of its properties. And here's a property called locked, which is a property with a Boolean value. Here's a member called add item, which is a method. And here's a event called key press. And that's something for which we can write an event handler. In Windows, if you're in the object browser and you want more information about a member of a class, you can just highlight it and press F1. In the Mac, you have to actually invoke help. Uh, but here's an example where I am showing the help that's available. So I have workbook highlighted, chosen here. I highlighted worksheets. And then I went to help, and I got help about the worksheets property of workbook. The help can be very helpful. Okay, now when you're working with the hierarchy, Excel uses a dot to go from one level to the hi of the hierarchy to the next, and also to, prefer to refer to things like properties, events, and methods. So let's suppose I have a list box to stick with list boxes, and it's called list word, and it's in a user form. I'm going to call that form index list box. So this is from one of my actual examples. And it's in a workbook called Index List Box. Now, suppose I want to refer to this list box in my code. As we've been writing code, we've just written the name of the list box, list word. And that's great as long as we know that when the code runs, the form that contains that list box will be active. It'll be on the screen. The user will be using it. Now, if I can't be sure of that, but I know the workbook will be active, then I would use another level of the hierarchy. So I would say, okay, it's in form index list box, and then I use a dot, and it's list word. So this navigates me into the form and then into the name of the um, particular control I'm looking at. Now, there often there isn't often a reason to try to do something in the code with a control that's not on an active form, but in case you needed to, this is how it works. Now in general, we could make a whole complete name of a form, and it would start with application, and or any object, application, dot, and then however many steps we needed to go, so maybe the name of the workbook, and then the name of the form, and so on until we get down to what we need to. Luckily, though, you, you hardly ever have to use a complete name if you know the containing object will be active, which it normally would be. But here's an example, and here I'm using form index list box dot list word, and that gets me to my actual list box, and then I want to refer to a method. So I still use a dot, but I put add item, and then in parentheses, the new word that I want to add. So you can see that here we're going from an object to an object it contains. Here we're going from an object to a method, but it's still the dot. Now, there's one nice feature in VBA. If you're writing code, and you put a dot, normally it's going to show you everything that could follow that dot. So that's really nice. And here, for example, I'm working on a program, and I have my list box called list words, and I put a dot. 
And now I get this little menu, which I can scroll down and it shows me all the members of Blissbox that could go here. Now, you can also explore the object model independent of when you're writing a program. So let's say I'm programming and for some reason I want to know what color constants are available. So what you can do is open the object browser and choose the VBA library. And what I did that, and I'm showing you on the next slide, I chose color constants. Okay, so here it is. I'm in the object browser. I'm looking at the VBA library. I chose color constants. And I, here they are. And then I also pushed help to see what I would get. And this is what I got. So you probably don't even need to know that these color constants actually stand for numbers, which you could have used instead, which are kind of awkward. So actually, these are much nicer to use. And this gives me a list in case I couldn't remember what they were. Now, of course, you can make other colors using the RGB system but that's a whole other topic. Okay, now here's a big warning if you want to do something like this. If you just are running Excel, you go to the editor and you open the object browser, you're not going to see all the objects. In particular, you're not going to, if there's no user form in your program yet, you're not going to see an entry for list boxes. So just be aware of that. Um, if you want to see those entries that pertain to user forms, you have to actually have a user form in your program. I suppose the reason for this is to try to keep you from being overwhelmed with all the information. Uh, but personally, I thought that was kind of a bad idea. Now another thing to watch out for, the object models are quite similar for Excel 2010, which is the Windows version, and 2011, which is the Mac version, but they're not identical. I think it's an extremely good practice to write code that'll work on both platforms, so you have to kind of be aware of this issue and, um, if possible, test everything on both. Usually if there's a difference, there'll be something in the 2011 version, sorry, in the 2010 version, the Windows version, that's not available in 2011. So again, this can totally happen. Be careful and test thoroughly. It's just like writing a web application where you're going to test it in a whole bunch of web browsers. On the other hand, um, it's very interesting to explore and see what's out there. If you're a serious developer, there's just, Excel is just huge and there's so much to find out uh, that it's kind of fun to poke around and see what's there. And one excellent place to get more information is the Microsoft site, and this is one part of it, the library. So I'm giving you the URL for it, so you can check there, or you can uh, just, you know, bounce around and, and look all through this site.